Well, hi folks, this is Joshua from Texas Gene Spindles, and today we are going to be making a Tibetan style whorl. This is actually the procedure I use for making um, all of my whorls. doesn't matter Tibetan or top whorl or sometimes bottom whorl. What I've got here is, let me get that in there, this is my little jig I made. Um, this just simply simply slides into my lathe and the whorls press fit onto it. So we're going to set that in there. And uh, give it a couple little taps to seat it. Now, I also use this uh, little wooden ring. This keeps my fingers or my hands away from those uh, sharp threads that are on my lathe. It also allows me to something to grab a hold of to stop the lathe in a hurry so <clears throat> we got that on now on the whorls themselves um, I prep all my whorls I cut them to circles um, I could just use squares but I find it quicker to um, just go ahead and balance all them out real quick into a circle and I drill the appropriate size hole um, into the center of it now all I'm going to do is Twist this on, it needs to be a good tight fit, otherwise it'll slip. Alright, we got that on, now we're going to move our tool rest up, Let me try to get a little bit better line on here, alright, I'm going to flip the lathe on. The important part right now is that my hole is spinning on center, which this one has just a tiny bit, tiny bit isn't. So, usually give it a little twist or two, and that feels lots better. I'm just feeling that the hole is uh, spinning on center. Now we're going to take um, one of my very favorite tools, uh, it's called Scoo Scoochie Gouge. And we're going to go ahead and clean up the top and shape it. Just like that. And we're going to come around to the edge of the world. Once we get the top part shaped, <clears throat> I'm going to move my tool rest and clean that up a little bit. And then we'll put the shape and shape it to the uh, edge of it. I want this cut pretty clean because I'm not a big fan of uh, sanding all day long. And actually when I do whirls, um, I make a bunch of them all at once. Just throw them on the lathe, get them turned to the shape, and uh, take them off. And then I get comfy, pull up a chair, and sit down and start sanding all of them all at once. So another thing that this little wooden ring does is since this is such a tight fit, this is actually going to help me press this whorl off here just by unscrewing the, the uh, collar here. So right now we've got the uh, basic um, outer shape and the top part done. What we need to do now is shape the bottom. So we'll screw that back on. And press it back onto my jig. And we're still spinning on the same axis. We're still nice and true. Move our tool rest back up. We're going to take this down. Where the uh, 
whirl meets the spindle shaft. I want that part nice and clean, nice and straight, so it has a clean fit. So we'll just do a little bit of that. When I'm turning these things, I don't want it real ridgy. I try to get a nice smooth lines during the turning process because that's going to greatly shorten the sanding process. If I'm having to sand out a bunch of flaws, it takes a long time. So, what I've done here is just put a little kind of a glue relief on the inside. I'm just going to angle it just a little bit. And, uh, that is it. Go ahead and pop it off the lathe. And I'm not going to bother with sanding right now. Y'all can use your imagination. I sand them all up to 400 grit. And, uh, this one is ready for a spindle shaft. So we'll just slide it on there. We'll check the fit. I want to make sure that my lip right here is no smaller than my spindle shaft. And it appears not. And I want to make sure that this is not covering up my detail. I, I'm not, I don't get too picky about um, how much of this little detail is showing, just as long as it's not covering it up. But there you have how I... Uh, make a Tibetan style whirl or a top whirl. Um, hope you uh, enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Bye.